Hey mamas. So as we're getting into the thick of this week, I wanted to quickly remind you of the power of your prayer. Now before you tune out, I know we all know, yes, praying is powerful. It's how we can connect with God. It's how we can hear Him and know Him more. It's all around a good thing. I had a moment recently, just like last week when I was reading Philippians 4, 8, I had a moment with James 5.17 recently about the true power of our prayer. And it was one of those moments where I read the verse before, nothing really stood out. You know, you read a verse and you're like, okay, cool. And you kind of move on. Well, this one kind of stopped me in my tracks. And I love when that happens because all of a sudden you're like, whoa, I did not see that before. So James chapter 5, it's the last uh, chapter in the book. He talks about a lot of different things. He talks about patience. He talks about, uh, you know, not grumbling about each other. He talks about um, suffering, what you should do when you're sick, confessing your sins to each other. I mean, there's a lot in here. It's like he was like, oh, shoot, it's the last chapter. Got to cram everything in there. (laughs) So I want to point you to uh, James 5.17. And as I just said that, I realized I probably need to give you a little context before and after that verse. So let me back up to verse 13 when James starts talking about prayer. He says, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Verse 16, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. And now, verse 17, Elijah was as human as we are. And yet, when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. And then the last verse I'm going to read, then... When he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. So when I was reading this in verse 17, the seven words that stood out to me was, Elijah was as human as we are. And I can't tell you exactly why those words stood out to me. I mean, the Lord works in mysterious ways, right? But I definitely paused and I was like, wait a minute, let me read that again. Elijah... I mean, one of the big, big heroes of faith. If he was a celebrity, he'd definitely be on the A-plus list. I mean, this guy, God performed so many miracles through him. He resurrected the son of a widow. He brought fire down from the sky. He entered heaven alive by fire. In the New Testament, he later showed up with Jesus and Moses. I mean, this guy was a big, big deal. And yet in this verse, verse 17, James compares Elijah to us and says, hey, you know what? Elijah was just like you. He was human. He had all the range of emotions of joy, happiness, depression, anger, anxiety, victory, all the things. And God still used him in incredible ways. And he is using you too. And if it's not super clear how, then just look into the eyes of your child. He has called you to love and guide that child. Okay, so that's one. God is using you just as he used Elijah in incredible ways. And then number two is the second half of the verse. It says, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. And the word I want to highlight there is earnestly. If you're doing something with earnest, that means You're doing something with intense focus. There's intense conviction, intense concentration. I mean, all of your energy is pouring into that activity. Nothing else is getting into the way of it. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I do anything, my mind tends to wander. And that includes praying. I'll start praying and then my mind will think about, oh, what are we going to eat for dinner? Ah, shoot, did I start defrosting the meat yet? Oh, my kids have that field trip in two weeks. Did I submit the permission form? Oh, I think we need more milk. I got to add that to the grocery list. I mean, it just wanders and wanders and wanders and I have to bring myself back. 
So that's why a couple of weeks ago I did uh, two episodes on prayer. One was prayer frequency versus prayer length. Because sometimes I'm praying and I'm like, wait, how many minutes has it been? (laughs) Oh boy, I hope I'm not the only one in that. But that's why I was advocating for prayer frequency. So you're meeting with God more, but you know, maybe it's not that long of a prayer each time. Maybe it's just 30 seconds of fully being focused. No other distractions, just you and God. I mentioned in one of those prayer episodes, and I'll link them in the show notes if you want to take a listen, that my best moments with the Lord are when I'm in cycling class and there's 30 seconds of speed racing and my body's working super hard and my mind is clear. And I also know that, Lord, in this moment right now, I only have 30 seconds to chat with you. Not that it's the only time I chat with God during my day, but it is really helpful to know that this is my time right now and I'm not going to waste it. So I encourage you to try and find those tiny little moments where you can intensely focus on your prayer. It doesn't have to be quiet. It doesn't have to be long. And if you don't know what to say, maybe you just start with, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. And you think about his goodness and his love, and I guarantee there will be something that comes to your mind that you're thankful for. So try it out, and I pray that God meets you in your earnest prayer. All right, Mama, that's all I've got for today. I hope you have a beautiful, hope-filled, blessed week. And I'll catch you again next time for a cup of coffee with a side of faith, wisdom, and hope.